Hi again, my name's Andy, and uh, just thought I'd share this with you. This is uh, a little capacitor uh, that I use with a uh, loop antenna that I made, a magnetic loop antenna I made, and um, I'll go through some of the details of it with you. Uh, so this it's um, uh, six to 43 picofarads so each capacitor has a value of uh, about 6 picofarads to 43 picofarads and uh, non-linear and um, I'm using it in series so I've got the two uh, parts of the capacitor and uh, I feed into one side uh, it couples via the air dielectric into the shaft into the second part of the capacitor and out through the other side. So I'm um, using it in series. Uh, so I actually get half of uh, this 43 picofarads. I'll, I'll get 21, 22 uh, picofarads uh, total capacitance. But because I'm using the two in series, it means that I can tolerate a much higher working voltage. And uh, as I'm using this on a, a magnetic loop antenna, uh, the voltages can be uh, quite high. Just to give you some idea of the voltages involved, I designed the loop to work at 18 megahertz, that's the 17 meter band. And at that frequency, the voltage across the capacitor will be 3.1 kV. Uh, the antenna also works uh, at 14 megahertz, that's a 20 meter band, and there the voltage across the capacitor is 3.7 kV. And oh, sorry, that's at 100 um, watts. Uh, in uh, in each case, these are the voltages at 100 watts. Um, now that doesn't cover a very wide range. So, um, uh, sorry, that doesn't cover a very wide range of frequencies. So what I've done, I've made another capacitor to go with it. And uh, this time, it, the capacitor is a piece of wire. This uh, wire capacitor gives me about 100 picofarads. And I connect it in parallel uh, with the uh, little variable capacitor across the loop aerial, which I'll show you in a minute and that uh, brings the frequency down to 7 megahertz and that allows me to operate in the 40 meter bands uh, but now the voltage across the loop so across all of the capacitors is 4.6 kV uh, so 4.6 kV RF it's, um, it's, it's a bit hazardous and uh, you need plenty of insulation and again, that 4.6 uh, kV is uh, with an output from the transmitter of 100 watts. Uh, in fact, it's eight pieces of wire. It's uh, a coax capacitor. So uh, I don't know if I'm getting that. I'm working outside in uh, daylight with a camera that I can't see. Um, so I've got um, the screens of the coax connected together, uh, so all of the screens are connected and uh, just as I'm using this capacitor as a, uh, a split capacitor and feeding in one side going through the dielectric across and down the other side, so in this case I'm feeding into the cores of the capacitor going down, feeding through the dielectric into this outer screen and they say they're bonded together with a, a copper wire like this bonded so all of the screens are going to have come in one side through the dielectric through the, to the screen the other side back through the dielectric of this coax and out and I'll, I'll show you how those couple off. These are the component parts of the antenna it's made from 22 mil copper pipe soldered together and I put a, a joint in the middle of the bottom section and that's the joint there and you can see the coax input uh, to uh, drive the RF in and at the top where the loop is open uh, I've got a sheet of macrolon that's a, a polycarbonate material uh, that just uh, bolts together with the wing nuts there 
and then those terminals in the very center are where I hang the capacitor. Originally I designed it to work in, in the 17 meter band but I found that uh, I could pull it to the 20 meter band and uh, ultimately I decided I wanted to try it on the 40 meter band and that's why I made the additional coax capacitor. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best uh, antenna in the world or the best I've ever made uh, but it was a bit of fun and I thought I would uh, share the uh, capacitor construction with you as uh, if you are making a loop antenna uh, it can be uh, a, a problem finding a, a suitable capacitor. I can't recall the grade of coax I used but it has a 10 millimeter outside diameter. The reason I've used a series parallel combination is so that I can operate the capacitor at twice the working voltage of the coax and the reason for the four in parallel is to get the capacitance that I need and uh, about 20 inches of active coax gives me 100 picofarads. Okay I hope you found that uh, interesting and hopefully helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.